Well, welcome to today's update, Monday the 1st of February. Now I want to start off by looking at uh, fever and how we define fever. Just a little bit of um, bit of a scientific survey on that with very useful implications. And, and the theme probably today is that herd immunity is probably going to be slightly further away than we thought. We're still going to get there, I'm convinced of that, but it might be slightly further away than we thought. So let's go on to the detail for today. Now, this first study has got quite quite good uh, practical implication, really. Fever threshold. When do we decide that someone has a fever? Now, the background to this is that we've been saying that someone should um, consider that they are possibly infected with um, SARS coronavirus to if their fever is 37.8 or higher. That's 100 degrees Fahrenheit or higher. And that should merit self-isolation. But it looks like we might have been missing people, especially in the older age bracket who don't develop high fever or high-ish fevers so readily. So what, what's this based on? Well, this is COVID symptom tracker app data. Now, they had uh, people that were uninfected. These are actually twins because these were recruited already to the twin study. Over a thousand of those. Uh, over 1,200 patients hospitalized with COVID-19. And um, nearly 4,000 people diagnosed in the community with a positive um, antigen test in the community. So good, fairly good sample size there. Now the results. Amongst the uninfected volunteers, lower body mass index and older age were definitely associated with lower basal temperatures they tend to run a lower temperature. And we notice that both of these results are very significant. P equals 0 0.001. So there's only one chance in a thousand that that result would arise by chance. So I think we can actually say that now with some, with some certainty. That lower body mass index and greater age is associated with lower body temperature. And therefore, when the body temperature goes up by a degree, you not, might not recognise it as being a fever because the body temperature is already uh, lower and you might not see the difference. So the fever in the older person might be 37.4, not 37.8 is what they are saying. So um, basal temperature showed a 47% heritability. That was interesting. So it's just a bit of an aside, really. So twins, uh, twins, it shows that there's a genetic factor in what your sort of basal normal temperature is. So uh, I actually checked mine yesterday, but we'll do it again. What the heck? So uh, this is just one of these simple electronic ones. Um, let's see when we're doing. So 36.9, I guess that's that's OK. 36.9, maybe slightly higher than I normally am. But um, so that, that's my sort of base temperature now. So in other words, we now realise that that temperature I've just taken on myself is partly genetically determined. So... They actually didn't know that before, so that's actually quite uh, quite interesting. Now, um, in COVID-19 participants who tested positive in the community, so these are patients that have tested positive for the virus, increasing age associated with a lower temperature, so that, that, that was a consistent finding. For each additional year of age, participants were 1% less likely to demonstrate a fever. That is 1% less likely to reach the 37.8 degrees centigrade threshold. And 37.8 degrees centigrade is 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. 37.4 uh, degrees centigrade, which is the new way of checking it, is 19, about 99 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's kind of the ranges we're talking about. Um, um, age affecting temperature in health and acute infection. So people, older people and thinner people have lower temperatures, relatively speaking, whether they are healthy or whether they have, uh, they are generating a febrile response. The febrile response is not raised as much. Older people with COVID-19 were also less likely to have a fever reaching 37.8. Right. Current health guidelines, 37.8 or more should self-isolate, but using a threshold of 37.4 for over 65s is a sensitive and specific sign of infection as 37.8 in adults under 65. So in other words, it's saying if people over the age of 65 have a temperature of 37.4 degrees centigrade, that's just as good an indicator of possible 
SARS coronavirus 2 infection as younger people having a temperature of 37.8 degrees centigrade. So I think that's quite useful to learn and, and remember that 37.8 degrees centigrade is 100 degrees Fahrenheit depending on the part of the world where you're watching. Now um, that's the end of that sort of a science survey for today. Now let's move on to um, just it's interesting to see how vaccines are going around the world. We're approaching about 100 million vaccines globally being given now. Um, United States 9.7% of the population so it's definitely coming on. UK um, slightly higher 14% uh, of the population. European countries still pretty low on the whole unfortunately. Israel leading again 54% and then pretty high was um, United Arab, Arab Emirates. Other countries like China, India quite low and interesting as we'll mention later today Japan, South Korea, uh, Australia um, haven't started yet. So anyway plenty of vaccine trackers there for you to peruse. I've put some uh, put several links for you to, to have a look at. Now the, the UK has ordered more vaccines. Now this is I suppose it's kind of good news we're being proactive but it's also bad news because we're looking into the end of 2021 and into 2022. So this is uh, Valneva, we've ordered an extra 40 million vaccines, French group, now ordered 100 million. So French, manufacture, French group manufactured in Scotland. And the government is saying this is going to give flexibility. Um, it's a two dose regime, it's a dead virus, so it's a simple old fashioned type of uh, vaccine and it can be stored in the fridge, which is good. And Nadeem Sahawi, the vaccination minister, surplus supplies could be distributed globally. Excellent. Now, the UK is going to end up with way more vaccines than it needs. There's no question about that. We're going to be awash with vaccines. And uh, that means we'll be in a position to help countries, hopefully, around the world. Now, um, it's good to see that the US government is being proactive here. Uh, we noticed that the European uh, countries have not ordered any. Um, they haven't anticipated this. Uh, so interesting to see if European governments or the European uh, global uh, agency order some of these um, or whether they're going to wait to uh, a month before or so like they did last time and then uh, realise they're short. Let's hope they're more proactive this time. So that's good. The proactivity is good. But just what I found slightly depressing is it, this is saying that the UK government, who we can assume is well informed, wants vaccine flexibility into 2022. And uh, it's slightly longer term than we've been hoping, but it probably is not surprising. We have said on this channel for some time it's going to take a, probably a few seasons to get rid of this virus, but I still believe that we will. Now, South African variant found in Surrey in southern England. Um, not good, not good. And these people do not have links to South Africa. So they don't have links to South Africa. Now, having said that, um, the, uh, there's two of them, I believe, live fairly close to Heathrow Airport, where a lot of cabin staff and flight staff generally uh, live. And of course, people who work in the airport live round about there and they could have come into contact with someone from South Africa. Or this could be community transmission of the South African variant in uh, England, which is really quite concerning. Uh, it's been identified by Public Health England random checks, which are pretty good. So if this was going to be discovered anywhere in the world, the countries with the best surveillance are the UK and Denmark. So um, good surveillance, but still... It's, it's there and that, that, that's a pity and it could well be community spreading now. So they're doing what they call surge testing. Lots of testing going on. Door-to-door -door testing, London, Kent, Herefordshire, Warsaw area. Um, hoping to, well, not hoping to find it, but if it's there, good to find it. And uh, isolating and following up the contacts of these people. So given that these variants are arising around the world, because people have been flying around the world, obviously they're going to spread. Flights from South Africa stopped way too late in the UK. Now, different country, but same theme. Francis Collins 
uh, National uh, National Institutes of Health uh, director, medical doctor, researcher, does say he's worried about this. It's all going to take. What it's going to take is a couple more mutations on top of that, and you're really going to start having to, to have to start worrying. Now, okay, I, I take his point there, but um, I think he's being somewhat pessimistic because there's only a certain number of times this virus can mutate. I mean, it only contains 29,300 bases approximately, and there's already been 12,000 mutations identified. Um, in those bases so so mutations have been identified getting on for half of the bases it, that make up the virus and of course most of those are mutated and then died out so there's only a limited number of mutations will make the virus more transmissible or, or, or more virulent it's limited as to what it can do but if Francis Collins is expressing concern publicly then that, that is a concern in itself now what he was worried about I think I think this is what he was worried about we looked at this a couple of days ago Novavax trial. Now, previously infected people did not provide full immunity to the new South Africa variant. So, what what the, what this this was an incidental study really from the um, incidental finding from the Novavax study that people who were recruited into their vaccine trial, some of them had been infected already, and they found out they didn't have full immunity to the new South Africa variant. And I think that's what Francis Collins is particularly concerned about. And um, well, yeah, he's, 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 he's concerned. So that, that, that's, if he's concerned, we should be somewhat concerned. And this is the data uh, he was basing that on. Uh, eff efficacy against the old strain of the virus, 95.6. This, of course, is the, uh, the Novavax uh, vaccine that we're talking about that we looked at in detail a few days ago. Uh, efficacy against the UK strain was down to 85.6, but efficacy against the South Africa strain looks like it's down to 60%. So that is what's, uh, that's what's worrying him. And uh, I, I agree, but I would just qualify it by saying there is a limited number of mutations that can occur. And of the 12,000 mutations that have been identified, I think it's reasonable to assume that there's thousands more that have simply died out because the mutation doesn't have a survival advantage for the virus. But it is a concern, especially the South Africa variant is a concern. No data that it makes people sicker, um, but it may turn out like that a little bit when we get the new data because we know that, well, we believe that the UK variant, okay, it's not based on brilliant data, but it looks like it, incre it, looks like it increases deaths by about 30%, up from about 1% to about 1.3% in 60-year-old men in their 60s. So um, it's, it's, it's an increase we could do without, and it may turn out when we get more data that that is the case for the South Africa variant. Now, um, the United Kingdom, South Africa, Brazilian variant have all been found in the US, apparently. UK variant, there's now 430 cases, and this does mean it's spreading. There's no question about that. Brazilian variant called P1, uh, one case been found in Minnesota. Now, um, apparently the National Institutes of Health are saying that the Brazilian variant is in the US, but we have no de details on uh, numbers or places. But we do believe it's been identified. So more to come on that story. And no question that especially this one, B117 2012 UK variant, is going to increase in the US. Well, it is, is now as we speak. Because remember, the United States has only sequenced about 0.3% of positive cases. Pretty low surveillance uh, level, really, although it is improving quite dramatically now. Jay Butler, Centre for Disease Control, I think he's deputy in charge. If a more transmissible strain becomes dominant, herd immunity could be up to 80 to 85%. Now, that is, this, is a bit, this is a bit depressing. Um, we had thought 70% originally. Looks like it could be up to 80 or 85 percent with the more transmissible strains. Makes herd immunity look that bit further away. I still think we'll get there, but it's a bit further away. Uh, Harvard, this chap from the Harvard School of um, Public Health. Um, we will not, we will not be for decades dealing with a pandemic. Funny, it's just a direct quote, so it's not in good grammar. But what what he means is this won't be here for decades. It won't be here forever. The concern is whether it will be a year or three years until we can make enough vaccines against strains to get this under control. So like 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 what we've been saying here, you're saying a year to sort of three years 
is probably the time span we're looking at and is clearly aware of the completely uh, pivotal role that vaccination is going to take in what we hope is an eradication program. Now, um, I'm going to use Israel as an example, and we'll probably be doing this a few times because Israel uh, is, is ahead of the vaccination curve. There we are. So I've put the UK on as a comparison. And we see that the cases in Israel are still dramatically higher than in the UK, despite having vaccinated 54% of their population. So the point I'm making here is that is the decrease in cases you get having vaccinated 54% of the population. The UK is vaccinated 14% of the population. And we see that this reduction, therefore, is due to the non-pharmaceutical, non-pharmacological interventions of social distancing. So Israel, 55% uh, vaccinated, yet still a lot of community transmission going on. The, the case numbers and the new cases in Israel are still high. Um, so population just over 9 million, vaccinated 54%, 19.7 uh, completed the course, but yet we see the cases are still pretty high. So these are the daily cases. Now it looks like it is tailing off, but still at a high level. This is a high level of new cases in Israel, despite a large pe a number of people being vaccinated. Uh, lockdown started on the 27th of December, is now extended. Airports and borders closed. Now, um, I don't like to pick out particular groups here, but this is in a few um, press outlets. Um, Ultra-Orthodox um, communities uh, in Israel don't seem to be complying with the, uh, the rules as well as others. Uh, for religious cultural reasons now we've said repeatedly on this channel that culture aspects of culture um, have to be suspended for the time being and yet on um, thousands packed into a funeral january 31st i'm not sure where it was um in israel though um th th this sort of cultural thing massively important of course but we just basically can't have thousands of people at funerals at the moment we can't afford that potential super spreader type event uh, now israel again the data is going to be fascinating um, as well as good for the country but vaccination is going to com complete at the end of march so talking seven or eight weeks and israel expects to have vaccinated all of its population now conversely japan is not um, now the Japanese government report, they had a report saying vaccinations are a central part of national security in 2016. Nothing happened about it. They haven't started vaccinating yet. Neither have Australia, neither have South Korea. They really need to get on with that. Uh, now, have you heard of the Japanese, um, the Japanese vaccine? Well, of course not. There's only one, apparently, and it's a startup. It's a new firm, Agges, uh, and uh, that's the only one they've got. And the phase three trials look like they're due to start in late 2021. I mean, for a country like Japan, highly populated, highly sophisticated country, they just really have completely failed on this. Completely. Um, now, and, and, and they insist on doing their own tests for imported vaccines. I mean, what, what's, the, what's all that about? Moderna vaccine trial began on the 21st of January and they've recruited 200 people. I mean, if you're going to have a vaccine trial with 200 people, really, why bother? Really? It's just... It's, 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 200 people is essentially meaningless. Meaningless. I would have thought. I'd, it's just... You know, if you look at 30,000 that we have in other trials. Finishes on the 11th of March. Approval is likely to come in May. So why on earth do they not just use the data from the UK and the US. We've got first class data from around the world. And yet the Japanese authorities are doing their own trial of 200 people. That just doesn't make any sense at all. Um, 50 million doses ordered of the Pfizer vaccine. Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, um, a bit further on. The trials there started in September, I think it was. And this is going to be approved late February. Now it will be approved in late February. So why not prove it now? You know, the, the data's there. It's all been done. Rolling data is available. Um, why, why don't they ask the, the, uh, the UK authorities or, I don't know, I don't know or the, ask the European Medicines Agency, even, even they passed it last week. 
But um, huge delays in Japan. Uh, 90 million manufactured in the country when they eventually authorise it. Olympics in July, I don't think so. I really don't think so. <clears throat> Vaccination for the over 65s um, will start in um, April at the earliest in Japan. Not impressive at all from the Japanese authorities. Now, um, Portugal suffered badly over the past few weeks. Very high death rate, um, population only 10 million. UK variant is being blamed and relaxation of restrictions over Christmas. That double whammy. Um, not too bad in the first wave, but they've had uh, 5,576 deaths out of a population of 10.2 million in January. That's the total number of deaths now. Hospitals close to being overwhelmed, <clears throat> probably are overwhelmed in places really. And extra cold containers outside morgues in Santa Maria Hospital, always a remarkably bad sign. So um, things we warned about, we, we warned about this uh, ages ago on this channel, relaxing rules for Christmas, not a good idea. UK variant might spread, yes. And, and we're making the same warning now for the United States. The UK variant is spreading. Um, let's hope it doesn't spread as much as it's done in Portugal. Right. Um, just a few things. Now, I'm sorry, I've been a bit, been a bit satirical here. I've, I've entitled this mental health in the pandemic. Um, now, this is, a, to be fair, mental health, of course, is a serious issue. We have looked at it. And um, we will look at it again. It's, it's a huge issue in this pandemic. But I was being a bit satirical here. Uh, I mean things that are irrational. Guernsey, one of the Channel Isles. I think it's a tax haven. I'm not sure. They had a dance festival the 19th to the 22nd of January in a big sports arena or something. Um, dance festival, 19th to the 29th of January. In the middle of a pandemic. Indoors in January. Really? In the middle of a pandemic? Try and work it out for yourself. I, I don't get it. Mass spread of event, now 186 cases as far as we know. Now in lockdown. I mean, really? A dance festival? I mean... Anyway, it gets better. Um, th th this would be comical if it wasn't so serious. Um, French warehouse libertine party. Now, I have never been to a Libertine party. I've missed out on that. So um, if you know what goes on at a Libertine party, do let me know. But I think it's safe to say, say that from a public health point of view, uh, cross-infection of um, respiratory viruses is certainly a risk. But I would imagine cross-infection of several other viral and bacterial infections is also a risk. But do let me know if you've got experience of uh, Libertine parties. 100 arrested, one of the suburbs of Paris. Everyone else was under curfew, but 100 people went to a Libertine party. I mean, you might have another thing for a Libertine party. It's not for me to say, but again, it just, it's just incredible. And now this one probably takes the biscuit. Um, Philadelphia. Um, now, apparently city officials assigned duties to unskilled young adults. Now, this was a group, a group, a group of people that called them that refer to themselves as college kids. Now, I must say I don't approve of that name at all. Young people can be very responsible um, and uh, um, referring yourself into that nature somehow abdicates responsibility, I think. I mean, three weeks after my 21st birthday, I was a, I was a registered nurse. So, you know, when I was 18, 19 and all through my 20th year, I was working flat out at that. And, you know, that, that young people can do, can do this. Um, but, but in this case, they didn't seem to come up to the mark. Startup called Philly Fighting COVID, new business. Um, and apparently they were running, in inverted commas, the largest corona mass vaccination centre in the city. Appointments weren't honoured. It was described as being complete chaos. Some people apparently were just trying to make money out of it. Personal data, I don't know if it did actually be sold, but uh, it said there was a provision that would allow Philly Fighting COVID to sell users' personal data to a third party. I mean, what were the city officials thinking of? You've got a startup of young people, inexperienced, massively underqualified, who saw this as what? An opportunity to make some money? 
Why would the city officials give it to a, what is essentially a bunch of amateurs? Um, don't get it. You know, these people are supposed to be running cities. Um, unskilled people vaccinating each other, apparently. Reports of vaccines being removed from the premises, just complete chaos and, and people arriving for vaccines and, and it not being honoured. And um, people trying to make money out of this, selling personal data. You know, there's communities in the United States are really quite threatened by this vaccination program. Now, you know, you know things like this are not going to help, but, but for, for city officials to apparently award... Anyway, check, check it out. The whole, the whole article's there. Re read it for yourself. But it just... Um, you know, you're reading this and you think, what? Right. <laughs> Fine, let's look at some pictures to finish. Okay, so... This is Christine who got her COVID vaccine. Excellent. Pleased to hear it. I wish I had, Christine. <laughs> wish I had. Uh... Christine sent this in. She's a retired physician, I believe. So great to see that you are now protected largely, as you'll know, Christine, from serious illness. Great news. Vaccination. Uh, this is uh, David and Mum who are watching California. I wonder where they got the idea for a dog with a mask on. But glad to know you're watching. Um, I believe uh, son and uh, mother watch in uh, separate locations. But they watch together, so that is good news. I'll let you uh, <laughs> make what you will of that. Thank you for saying that in, uh, Freya. Good. I think I appreciate that. I appreciate the sentiment, certainly. Thank you. And this is a psalm I sent this in from Morocco. Um, so I think... I'm not quite sure what this is, actually. I probably did know at the time, but I probably downloaded this. It looks like a testing centre. Looks like a testing centre, doesn't it, in Morocco? So good to see that organisation things are improving in Morocco. OK, that is us for today. Um, slightly longer to go than we'd hoped, but uh, we will get there. And as we become vaccinated, more and more people become vaccinated. More and more people are going to be protected from severe disease. But of course, we carry on with all the same precautions as we have done for some time now I'm afraid but it will get better it really will and I believe this virus will be eliminated in a few seasons thank you of course for watching